YouTube, it's night and today I have one of two replays that was not live cast during the winter season final of the SCS Winter Circuit. This match is between Zadaika and Polar Bears of the quarterfinals of that tournament. Let's go ahead and introduce our players starting in the top of Shiva Prime. It is our yellow UEF commander with the name of Zadaika. He's opening up with one air factory and his opponent Polar Bears is opening up with one uh, he's also a UEF, but in the color orange, so very close colors of these two. And he's opening up with one air and one land factory. So we'll see what Zodaika chooses. It looks like he's just a little bit ahead on the expansion here, but Polar Bear managed to spam quite a bit of planes. And he's actually using this scout that's out of position to engage with Zodaika and is going to take out his air very, very early here. Actually, that could have... That could have been a little better for Zadaika. His plane was a little behind there. And unfortunately, Zadaika will lose most of his planes here. But he he's not super far behind at this point. Well, actually, four. Four planes behind, and another one is going to happen here. Nanta Air Tower should be coming online here, most likely. A land factory getting built, a very late land factory where Polar Bear is already going to his second one. Both players have reached this bottom expansion. Gonna start building mass extractors here, but Zadaika is just a little bit ahead on this expansion while Polar Bear is really prioritizing that land factory production. But it looks like Zadaika is actually not gonna even try here. Controls case here in game one and uh, Taking it to game two, 1-0, Polar Bear with a quick lead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The map is Coalition Shipyard, and we once again have our yellow UEF commander, Zadaika, oops, opening up with one air factory. His opponent, Polar Bears, our orange UEF commander, opening up with a double land factory. Interesting progression i uh, almost always see him opening up with one air and one land uh well that is if his opponent is going land as well looks like he's going to be expanding with one engineer here building up a lot of energy generators i'm not sure why he is prioritizing it this much and Zdeck is actually sending uh two planes here this time uh, I'm not sure because I feel like that's a little riskier, but it is an earlier air factory. So he sees that there is no air coming out, so he's going to switch right away to bombers. This is one of the key things to do as a UEF player is to switch to those bombers when uh, you don't need the wasps anymore. And he's positioning his wasps really, really intelligently, really uh, well done. He doesn't even need a radar at this point. He just has a vision of pretty much everything his opponent can do and radar coverage of this important area. Bomber guns coming in, but Polar Bear doing a nice job here healing this tank. And an anti-air tower is coming up in Polar Bear, a uh, Polar Space, Polar Bears, <laughs> uh, and it's gonna cover most of this. So that's really good placement. But Polar Bear is not really even attempting to take expansion points to the left and right here which is a little concerning for the long game especially because he's trying to push here he's not establishing a base in the center either so if this push is held by Zadaika it's gonna be very very tough for Polar Bear to play the long game although Zadaika is not expanding too too terribly more than his opponent but the fact that these MMLs are also kind of late here it's gonna prevent Polar Bear from really pushing too fast into this base. And that air tower is going to come online, so that's going to prevent any kind of bombing shenanigans for quite some time. Polar Bear once again healing his tank. I don't think he lost a single unit yet, which is definitely good for him. And Zadaika already has, uh, it looks like just one land factory. And uh, miss, uh, miss builds here with one. Mass Extractor, Zadaika is going to engage here with Polar Bear, doing a nice job tanking. A lot of units are taking damage from Polar Bear here because Zadaika is prioritizing the units instead of the ACU here. But somehow both of their ACUs are very near in their health. 
bombing runs coming in getting some nice bombing runs polar bear is in the red somehow even though he has more units zadaika goes underneath the shield and polar bear is going to explode here what an incredible game i think zadaika had a star a couple of star upgrades on polar bear and manages to hold this very difficult push to hold on just uh Oh, he did have two land factories, but still he had much less units than Polar Bear because Polar Bear opened up with two land factories. So very nice game. Zodaika tying it up one to one. Let's go ahead and go to game three and see what happened there. Welcome back to game three between Polar Bear and Zodaika. The map is Desolation, so we will most likely have another very quick game here. Let's go ahead and introduce our players. I already see very similar builds from our two UEF player, the first of which is our yellow commander with the name of Sadaika. He's opening up with a double land factory and I would not be surprised if he plops down a third or at the very least moves up and plops down a third up front. Same thing with his opponent. It is the orange UEF commander, Polar Bear. He's already plopped down two early land factories and he's going to be moving forward, most likely to do the same, plop down a third and expanding quite a bit i i don't like uh how polar bear expands with his energy i think he boxed down a lot of his production very early on in these energy gener generators and i feel like that's a little inefficient we do have a scouting from sadaika coming forward here I'm going to be seeing all the things so he's going to see that there's land polar bear just a little quicker here on his base uh, well, the third factory actually goes down for the Daika over here on the bottom. That's a little bit of a risk, especially because his reinforcements aren't really too close. But he got lucky because Polar Bear did not plop down an early radar here. So he has no idea this base is going on or that these reinforcements are streaming down here. There's actually pea shields coming out, which is not very good for Polar Bear, actually. Because early on, pea shields aren't super great. And this early push will actually be very, very good. There's no mobile missile launchers coming out just yet, but I imagine Zodaika will be producing them from this factory. There is a mobile missile, or sorry, TML upgrade on this factory. And it looks like that radar just went online, so Polar Bear does now know that this is happening. And no, interestingly enough, it's just tanks. He's just going to be using the TML on that factory. A fourth land factory is going to go down, so if this position holds, this will be very, very good. Is there a shield generator being built on this factory? I would actually prioritize that over this land factory here. There is something being built. I think it is, the I think it is a shield generator here. Yes, indeed, it is a shield generator. Nice engagement. That's going to do better than these two P shields in Polar Bear's composition. And the tanks will be much, much better. So this is a nice hold, I want to say, from Zadaika so far. And now he has open reign over the base of Polar Bear, who is expanding better than Zadaika, actually. Interestingly enough, a lot of energy generators going down for Zadaika. I'm not sure why he queued up so many there. That's I think is unnecessary. And I actually don't like this push by Zadaika, but maybe he wants to get in here before there's a critical mass of P shields going on. Polar Bear is already in half health and he's losing a few units here. Of course, he doesn't have quite as much of firepower as the Daika, especially with that ACU. He's able to bridge through those shields. But Zadaika is losing a lot of tanks here. A lot of them were in the red there, but a little bit of a micro from Polar Bear brings it right back. And it is fairly even here. Zadaika is going to pull back, taking out that radar, but does have to pull back. I would have just built a couple of mobile missile launchers, maybe sat back a little bit. Oh, this push by Polar Bear is completely unnecessary, though, in the center here as Zadaika gets underneath the shields. And that's the quickest way to just completely make your peace shields useless. And, yep, it's going to have to pull back here. Once again, oh, a little Miss Micro from Zadaika losing two tanks for nothing there, but he is outproducing his opponent at the moment with four land factories. Fourth one is just coming up from full so bears. There's a fifth one queued up, but I don't think he can afford it because there's mass extractors that have been dead for quite some time here. Point defense coming up from Polar Bear indicating really that he is a little bit in a panic mode here. Although somehow Zadaika's ACU was dropped to similar health as Polar Bear. That is a little surprising. Last time I saw it, it was at full health almost. Fourth land factory came online. 
Looks like fifth one is being built over here. So this is looking very nice for Polar Bear. Uh, Zadek is actually not expanding. It looks like his engineer is stuck here. So pathfinding issues. That is very unfortunate. But that actually might be a little good here with, uh, you know, allocating some more resources towards the front. Uh, this is so unfortunate that Zadaika does not catch this engineer. Uh, this might actually be very, very uh, detrimental if it ends going to a later game. And it looks like ever so slowly this engineer is just zigzagging now, I think, finally breaking free. That's a little unfortunate. Polar Bear is still trying to rebuild his base here, but Zdaika has a lot of mobile missile launchers here. Fifth Land Factory is coming online as well. And uh, really, it's time to shut down this base as a Daika, I think, and uh, time to cripple his uh, opponent's economy even more. A land factory goes down for Polar Bear here, and that is, yeah, this is honestly a very big deal, and Polar Bear can't really deal with this because he's won P-Shields. I mean, you just don't have enough firepower to deal with, uh, you know, a factory shield that's positioned this early and this up front. Um, I don't know if this was especially designed for P shields by Zadaika, but this is actually working out very well because Zadaika can just fall back to his uh, factory shield and not even really worry about it. Um, now he can push out. Wow, taking that PD very, very quickly, those shields just fall like they're not even there. Absolutely insane. And all this is doing is buying his MMLs even more time to snipe even more mass. And now. Uh, I'm pretty sure Polar Bear can't even produce out of all of his uh, factories here. There is a flank coming in from Polar Bear, but it not, might, might not even matter because there's afterburners activated on those tanks. A lot of orange units are falling here. There's actually maybe like three tanks in this composition. Most of it is peace shields that I can just push through and not even care about it because there's just not enough firepower here. Polar Bear is all in the back foot here he's not even microing his units in the back just now sending them forward and Zodaika chooses to engage here knowing that there are no ground firing units here and is probably going to eliminate all the units here and the commander there's just still so many tanks from our yellow commander and Zodaika winning over polar bear two to one reverse sweeping if you will of course, it's much less impressive in a best of three, but nevertheless, a reverse sweep by our Russian player going to the semifinal of the tournament. What an exciting series, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. If you're still watching, give a thumbs up to this video. If you like the video, leave a comment. If you love the video, please subscribe. And if you are blown away by it, check out my Patreon page. This has been Knight. Take care and peace out.